<laughs> Holy I'm righteous but ruthless mind. Hey, what's going on everybody? Man, you know, I was just sitting there thinking. I mean, it's so much going on. I had to think about the whole Sodom and Gomorrah era. If, I, if anybody read the story of Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah, I mean, just look at how things is going on around us now. Look in your city, look in your state, look in your neighborhood, look around your corner, your street corner, your block. Just look at all the stuff that's going on. Just think Sodom and Gomorrah. Basically, there was a city or two cities. You might have to correct me if I'm wrong. There was no righteousness in that place to be found. They had everything from what, what, just look at society now. That was Sodom and Gomorrah then. And of course, according to the story, Lot and his family was there. God, it was like, there is nothing righteous about this place. Uh, this place has, this place cannot exist. We must, uh, this place has to go. It has to go. So, of course, Lot was like, like I said, I can't, don't quote me on every word. But Lot was like, if I just find 10 people, if I just find 10 righteous people in this place, would you not destroy this city? The story goes, God was like, yes, if you can find 10 people, I will not destroy this city. Lot went, came back. He had to change it up again. Lot was like, "Can I just, if I find five people, will you save the city? Of course, God was like, if you find five righteous people in this city, I will, I will spare it. I'm cutting this short. But Lot came back, couldn't find five people. So to paraphrase it, God was like, you need to get you and your family the hell out of there. There is nothing good about this city. This city has to be destroyed. So as the story goes, God destroyed the city because there was nothing righteous about it. Now, that's the whole righteous but ruthless mind that I am talking about. In my opinion, that is the righteous but ruthless approach to the city of Sodom and Gomorrah being destroyed. Righteous but ruthless minds. There was nothing righteous about that city, so mercy so there was no mercy on that city being destroyed. It had to go. Thinking of all these things going on, all these so-called celebrities, all these entertainers, all these rappers, how they're being enriched. They're being enriched. People are investing in what they do. And then when you look at what they're doing, is basically contributing to the destruction of black people. Black people are the ones who's, for the most part, who is in front of us. When I say in front of us, they're the ones that we're looking at on television. They're the ones that we're hearing as we go to school. They're the ones we're hearing when we go to work. They're on our radio stations. They're on all our TVs. They're on our movies. They're the, all these people, for the most part, none of them, or most of them are contributing in, to, to our society in a negative fashion, in a negative way. If they're not talking about selling drugs, if they're not talking about doing drugs, if they're not talking about being a bitch, if they're not talking about uplifting a hoe, if they're not talking about they're a nigga, if they're talking about this, that, if they're not talking about they're a thug, if they're not talking about they're locked up, if they're not glorifying being locked up, if they're not talking about being hood, if they're not talking about being tough, if they're not talking about they're from the streets, it's always something destructive that they are being rewarded for. So it can't, it's not a coincidence. You think that half of these entertainers, rappers, or whatever you want to call them, if you think that they're acting alone in what they are doing, then you are sadly mistaken. Somebody is investing 
and that very thing that they're doing to us. So let's think about this. So just just say, okay, do we think do we look at these artists as being blessed? Because you know how most artists do when they become successful. The first thing they do is they give praise and honor to God. When an artist gets successful, they win, they win an award, they be rewarded with something, they get accolades, something they get away with don't happen. First thing they do is give praise and honor to God. Now just think of this. I just go out. Oh, I'm not going to say me. Artists, rappers, entertainers, celebrities, or whatever you want to call them. They rap, they sing, they talk about straight destruction. They talk about selling drugs, <coughs> excuse me, doing drugs, buying drugs, committing murders, committing homicides, robberies, kidnapping, bitches, hoeing, disrespectful things. Being a thug, being a criminal, going to jail, being in jail, pounding their chest because of jail. They do all these things, which is straight destructive behavior and straight destructive messages that they put into our brains. They do all these things and they get rewarded for it. When they get rewarded for it, they say they want to give honor and thanks to God for them being blessed. This is what I just said. They just telling you and telling you everything about that call that is to contribute to the demise of black society. That's all they talk about. Not saying all of them, but I'm giving an example. A lot of them talk about everything that has to do with the demise of black society and black community. And then they turn around and say they want to thank God. Why do we think that God would bless you or that is God that is blessing you to do that? Do that even make sense to even contribute that to God? Why do we pump so much destruction in our own neighborhoods and then turn around and thank God for it? I just shot up the whole block. I shot three people and killed ten and I don't go to jail for it. I escape and the first thing come out of my mouth is I want to thank God. That's crazy. You see how crazy that sounds. I come in your home and I kick in your door and I rob you. I take all your belongings and I escape. You take a shot at me. You didn't kill me. You didn't even braze me. I ran away and got away with it. And the first thing I do is I want to thank God I was not shot. What make you think God had a hand in on it? You know God is a generic term, right? You know the devil is a God also. Just think about that. So all these things that you think is a blessing, artists, rappers, or whoever you call yourselves, for your behavior and what you're pumping into our society, you think is God blessing you? You got all your artists running around here with money as big as they chest. They post on Instagram, stacks of money. And they say it's a blessing from God. Listen to what they're talking about. It's straight destruction. It contributes to genocide. It's contributing to the murder of black people on a daily basis. It's contributing to, to incarcerations. It's contributing to our neighborhood just being ran by thugs. What they are talking about, it contributes to that. But they turn around and say, I want to thank God. What God are you serving? What God are you actually thanking? Because I don't think no God with a righteous consciousness with a, a righteous God will not bless you for pumping destruction to a whole nation of people. 
What God blesses you with that? You go out and commit a crime, and because you didn't get caught, you thank God. Why do we even do that? Why do we think that's okay to do? Why do we actually think that we are being blessed? Once again, I said the devil is a God also. Back to what I was saying in the beginning. Let's think about Sodom and Gomorrah. God is righteous but ruthless, in my opinion. He had no pity on the destruction of that place. He was ruthless in the form of righteousness. That's righteous but ruthless. How, how dare they give thanks to God for the destruction that they are causing because they are being rewarded for it and they believe that they contributed to God. How crazy is that? <laughs> Holy I'm righteous but ruthless mind.